Hi book friends, um, I am in a new flat. I have waited until, what is it, like the 4th or 5th today? Um, I've waited until into December to make these videos because I needed to build new bookshelves. My old bookshelf, bless it, best thing ever. There just wasn't any place here for me to put it, so I had to make brand new ones. Um, this is what they look like either side of my fireplace. I'm really happy with how they turned out, but this was not the plan. I was just gonna have planks of wood and then bricks, um, but then uh, I consulted a structural engineer and apparently that would have been far too heavy. So now I have a kind of mix of bricks and, and wooden props. But I'm so happy with them. I unpacked all my books yesterday and it just makes just soothing me so much. Contrary to what was said in previous videos, I did actually read a fair bit this month. I read five physical books and listened to two audiobooks. So I'm just gonna go through them quickly. I'll tell you which ones I'm making actual videos of and the ones that I'm not, I'll maybe go through a little bit more. The first book I have to talk about is Calypso by David Sedaris. Uh, David Sedaris is like an American journalist, writer, funny man, and I've heard him a lot on This American Life Stories, uh, but never any of his, I've never read any of his original work. This is his 10th book, and I'm assuming most of those are similarly like memoirish, autobiographical, humorous, um, and just connecting with what life is and, and relationships with people. And just the weird things that happen to him and that he comes across. Um, and I enjoyed this so much. It was really just fun and lighthearted and silly. And um, I read some reviews being like, oh, he's, you know, it's still great because it's David Sedaris, but I preferred it when he was like, you know, young and wild. Um, and now he's very much like, owns a cottage in Surrey. Is it even Surrey? It's Sussex. They have a beautiful cottage in Sussex. I just want to read one passage. <laughs> We're not a horrible couple, but we have our share of fights. The type that can start with a misplaced sock can suddenly be about everything. I haven't liked you since 2002, he hissed during a recent argument over which airport security line was moving the fastest. <laughs> this didn't hurt me so much as confuse me. What happened in 2002, I asked. <laughs> I don't have much more to say about this than it was funny and I enjoyed it and I'd like to read more of his work, so I'm not gonna do a full video about it. Um, but if you've read a lot of David Sedaris before, tell me where I should start, what I should read next, because I'd like to do more of it. Next I have British by F. Hirsch. Hirsch. Um, this I read for my girls book club, uh, which was a really interesting discussion um, and I've done a video on it, so links down below. The next book I read was My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg. This came out last year. I remember seeing the cover and thinking, oh, that was kind of cool, but never actually looking it up. And then I was listening to like a rerun of an old podcast and someone mentioned what it was about and I was like, that sounds so up my street. Um, so this was, I've, I've got a ban on buying books for myself at the moment um, since September until the end of the year but I was in Berlin the other week and I was like, it doesn't count, we're in international waters. So I found a really, really lovely um, English language bookshop and bought this. So happy I did. I devoured it and I really loved it. It just, <laughs> it really fits so many of the things that I love in books, which is actually not having very likable characters, having a lot of like ennui and also just like a slow self-destruction. So I was, Big fan of this book. I've done a whole video about it, which you can see below. Next, I read two audiobooks. I re-listened to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Um, this is because I was listening to, but I don't know why I didn't like say it, but um, I was listening to reruns of Dear Hank and John. I basically listened to all of this podcast called Answer Me This uh, by Helen Zaltzman and Ollie Mann. Um, I listened to it all in like January and then two months ago I was like, I'm really bored of all of the podcasts I listen to. I'm just gonna listen to this one podcast from the start all the way through, which is crazy because it has hundreds of episodes. Um, and I just did the same with Dear Hank and John and it was just wonderful. So yeah, it just made me want to do more Hank and John things. So I decided to reread an absolutely remarkable thing. I only read it um, when, it, when it came out. I've only read it once when it came out about a year ago um, and I really liked it. And um, yeah, it was exactly the same kind of fun romp. I'm not gonna make a video about it because I've talked about it before, um, but I enjoyed it, that's it. The other audiobook I listened to was The Gone Away World by Nick Harkaway. Um, this is like a science fiction, dystopian, but pretty chunky book um, that a friend of mine recommended to me. It's her favorite book. And it's about a guy in a world where there's basically been nuclear fallout and there is a pipe that's being laid around the entire globe um, to pump out this gas which stops 
um, mutations happening. So it keeps, it's like a safe zone where there isn't any like weird stuff going on. Um, and it's about a, a guy who is in this crew where they help repair this pipe um, and they get called out to repair this pipe. And then it goes back in time to like him being a child and everything that kind of led up into that moment. Um, it was really, really good. It was one of those great adventure sci-fi things. Um, there, was, there was like one thing that really bugged me about it, but I can't talk about it because it's just like a giant spoiler, um, which I just thought was a shame. You probably know what I'm talking about if you have read it, maybe. Anyway, I just thought it was a shame. It made me sad because I was really into that thing and then it was taken away from me. <laughs> That's so ambiguous. Anyway, um, I thought it was really great. So yes. The next book I read was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Um, I read Normal People by Sally Rooney at the beginning of the year. I wanted to basically like not read this for as long as possible because I knew a bit too much about it um, because my boyfriend went to the same university and was in the same debating society as Sally Rooney. So there's a lot of like rumours and I just, I like knew a bit too much about it and I wanted to like take a long time to come back to it and try not to be annoyed by those kind of comparisons I had in my head. Um, I failed at that because <laughs> there were like, I really enjoyed it, but then at the same time, I was just annoyed at it the whole time a bit. And so I gave it three stars on Goodreads and I'm now like, but it was really good, but I can't tell whether I was really, oh, I don't know. I can't tell whether I was really critical of it in a in a sincere way or in an overly critical I've been thinking about reading this book for two years and I have these hang-ups with it way. Anyway, I made a whole video on it, you can see the link below. Those last four books I read in the space of about 10 days and I needed to just like detox a little bit um, and also my book club book for this month is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens which is like a big chunk so I thought I'd read something really tiny until I I uh, got that, I just picked up today. Um, so I read a tiny book that I've had for ages and never fully read, which is um, The Clothing of Books by Jhumpa Lahiri. I don't know how to pronounce that name, I'm sorry. Um, this is just like a tiny little tome. I remember I bought it in a art gallery in Bristol. Um, and it's just about how, like, what book covers mean um, to authors. I didn't enjoy this very much um, because uh, Lahiri, she's, a, she's an author and has written like several works of fiction um, and it was very personal like the kind of personal way you'd have to already care about her to enjoy it um, also it was originally it was originally written in Italian and translated um, and there were moments where I could kind of feel the, the translation wasn't wasn't working very well for me um, so yeah so yeah it didn't really say much wasn't Certainly interesting to me. You know what is interesting on this topic though? You know what, I'm gonna go grab it because now all of my bookshelves are up, which means I can just pick books off shelves again. Oh, it's been so long. So what I wanted in, instead of what I got from that book, I wanted something like this. This is a book called What We See When We Read by Peter Mendelssohn. I'm gonna drop it to you. Um, and it's, a, and it's, it's all about um, like literally when you read certain things what your brain is doing and what you're picturing in it um and it's also just beautifully designed and i love this book a lot and this is i kind of wanted this but mediating particularly on covers and how readers um relate to and uh, it transforms your experience of a book what is on the cover and she was more like oh i just hate all of the covers of all of my books and some of them are different in different languages and i like a few of them but mostly hate all of them anyway wasn't up my street so that has been my month of reading gosh so much has happened this month i've i moved house as you can see um i also spoke at two conferences which was kind of crazy um so yeah this month i don't know how i managed to read them, read that much to be honest um this month as i'm reading great expectations i'm not going to audiobook it maybe if i'm maybe if i'm running out of time but i think and I'd like to take it fairly slowly. I basically think that I may only read Great Expectations. <laughs> um, I think I've read 69 books this year, which would be like a great number to end on. Um, but my internal goal was 75, uh, and I'll obviously end on 70 at least, but um, 
Internally I wanted to read 75 and I'm not sure if I can do six in the last month unless I do what I usually do every December and just re-listen to Harry Potter. I don't let myself listen to or read Harry Potter more than twice a year and I usually do it in December um, but the last time I did it was in July and July and December are five months away which is a bit cheeky. Who cares? You don't care. Um, anyway, tell me how your month has gone. Uh, I, I like, I'm not sure about this whole view thing. I think I might be like a stand up person soon because there's a lot more interesting things going on up there. This is just like a hole where my little stand is. This is where the books will stand. Uh, but also I'm gonna maybe swap out these books for like boring series books. Um, and I think there's just a lot, there's a lot of fun stuff happening up there. So it might be a, a standing situation. And I'm gonna have some art on the wall here and there as well. So hopefully that'll be an interesting background. I don't know. This already feels so much better than my old flat for vlogging in. Um, I have like two giant windows there. I've put an extra light over there. Um, there may be an issue with some noise on the street. Anyway, that's enough from me. Tell me how your month has gone. Um, and if you're interested in any of these books or would recommend me any based off any of these books, I'd love to hear it. I need to compile my Christmas list. Um, and yes, I will see you next month. Woo! <laughs>